Hey, what's going on guys? Today we are inside of Affinity Designer and I want to talk about the paintbrush tool and a few of its settings and why and when we may want to use this. So the paintbrush tool can be used in a few different ways depending on the project that you are working on. For instance, in this quick demonstration, I've got two different images inside of my canvas here as you can see. And what we're going to do first of all is just blend these two together. And the way that we would do that is by applying a mask as well as using the paintbrush tool. So first of all, if we go over to the right hand side in our layers and we select this top layer here, which is a mountain, then we're going to head down towards the bottom to this rectangle with the circle inside of it. And that is how we're going to apply a mask to our layer. So once we've done that, you can now see that we have the mask underneath our mountain layer. And what's important here is that you select just the mask on its own or not both of these at the same time. So if you click on the mask and make sure that it's highlighted blue just like that, then what we're going to do is head over to the top left hand side and we're going to switch our persona to the pixel persona. Then once we are inside of the pixel persona, we need to make sure on the left hand side toolbar that we select our paintbrush tool. And with our mask selected, we're now going to talk about how this works. So when it comes to using our paintbrush tool with a mask in order to blend multiple images together, the only thing we need to remember is to always use the black and the white colors only. Otherwise, this effect won't work. So first of all, if I make my way back up to the top right hand side to where we have our white and our black, I'm just going to swap this white around to be black as our primary color. So I can demonstrate how this works. So with this on black and our mask is highlighted blue, you will find once I start to hover over this image, we can now see the layer underneath it. So all we need to do to blend these together is just start painting over the canvas just like that to introduce the layer underneath the top one. So that is what's going to happen when we use a color black It's going to reveal what is underneath the top layer. Whereas if we swap this over now to be white, what this is going to do is start painting it back in case we made any mistakes. So it's just a case of painting back over this to get back to where you started if you're not happy with what you did. So in a nutshell, black is going to show what is underneath our top layer, whereas white is going to hide what is underneath our top layer. So I hope that makes sense. So what I'm going to do now is just hit command or control zero just to zoom in and fit to screen. Then we'll switch back to our black again so we can start to reveal what is underneath the top layer. And we're going to start painting over this so we can blend it in just a little bit better. And we'll talk about some of these different settings that we have on the top left hand side. So starting with the width, that is going to be the size of our brush that we've got right here. As you can see, the best way to increase or decrease the size of your brush is with your left or right bracket keys on your keyboard. That is going to make that a lot quicker for you to do it that way. Then next to the width, we have the opacity. And that's just a case of just fading that out a little bit. If we bring that down to about 50% and then we just start to paint over that. You can see it looks a little bit more dull. And the opacity is something that you will use an awful lot when it comes to combining images together. So I'm just going to command or control Z just to undo that for a moment. I'll set that opacity back to 100 just for now. So next to that, we have our flow. And the way to think of the flow is almost like using a spray can. And what I mean by that, if you just picture yourself holding a can of spray paint and you push as hard as you can on that nozzle, what's going to happen is it's going to project as much paint as it can giving you that 100% flow. Whereas if you just push down lightly on that nozzle, so we just change that flow down to around 40% and you start painting with that, that's actually going to give you a thinner layer of paint when you start spray painting. So the flow is there to decide how much paint you want to apply to the brush at any time. So then next to that, we have the hardness. And before I talk about that, I'm going to hit command or control Z just to get rid of that. So I'll put that flow back up to 100% so we can see it better. And then we'll talk about the hardness. So if we bring our cursor back onto the canvas and we just click anywhere, we can see here now we have this really sharp edge around the circle. And that is exactly what the hardness is used for. It's going to give you either a softer or a harder edge around your circle. So if we come back up to the hardness now and we bring that down to say around 40%, and once again, if we just click anywhere on our canvas, you can now see we have a much softer edge around our circle. And the majority of the time when it comes to combining images together, you are going to use a softer brush and the hardness settings will vary on the type of project that you are working on. So what I'm going to do once again is command or control Z just to get rid of that. I'm going to bring my hardness all the way up just while we quickly paint over this. So I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys to make that a bit bigger. And we'll just start painting this in as quick as we can. This doesn't have to be perfect because I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how this comes together. 
So I'm going to go over that. And I'm going over the hills just so I can demonstrate that we'll use the black and the white colors. So the idea now is just to zoom in towards the bottom of our canvas so we can see some of the details in the hills. And we want to shrink our brush down with our left and right bracket keys. And once again, we'll change our color from being black over to white. That way it's going to reveal our original top layer once again. And all we really got to do now is just make our brush a little bit smaller and start finding some of the edges of the hills. So if you pay attention to the circle and you just see at the top there, we've got that first part of the hills, so we could paint that in. And it's just a case of just keep making your way over this and just paying attention to where the sky comes into play and where the edge of the hills are. So that there as well. And at this point, it's good to go over softer brushes. It's going to look a little bit more natural. So if we go up to the hardness once again, and we bring that down to around 50%, and then we just keep making our way around this. You can do this in one full swoop. If you like, it's entirely up to you. Go ahead and make your brush either bigger or smaller just to get into these areas that you want to use. And if we zoom in even further and you find there's bits that you've missed or you want to go back over, it's just a case of swapping between your black and your white. Like I said, I'm not going to do this properly as I just want to demonstrate how you would do it. And this tutorial isn't really focused on blending images together. However, I do have other videos on my YouTube channel based on this topic. If you want to go ahead and check some of those out. However, I will pause the video at this point so I can quickly just paint around these hills. And then we're going to use an adjustment to blend both the hills and the sky together. Okay, so I've just drew around the entire hills. This isn't perfect, but it will do as a quick demonstration. And it is a lot of back and forth with the softness and the hardness of the brush, as well as changing between black and white just to ensure you get the effect that you are going for. So once you've finished doing this, and by the way, I do want to mention, if you do want to do a sky replacement in Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo, this is not the method you would use. There is definitely easier ways of doing this. However, this is just to show you how to blend images together. So now with our sky painted in, what I want to do is just change the colors a little bit on the hills just to look a little bit more natural with the color of the sky. So if we make our way back over to the right hand side and we make sure that we select our layer with our hills on the top there, then we're going to come down towards the bottom to our adjustments. Then inside of here, we are going to look for color balance. And before we continue, you want to make sure that your color balance adjustment is inside of the layer on the top there and not on top of the one underneath it. Because if that's the case, it's going to start affecting the color of the sky rather than the hills. So just make sure that is indented inside of your top layer. So with our color balance, what we need to do in here is just change some of the settings just to take away more of the green and introduce some red. And we'll just start by adjusting some of the highlights. So I'm going to bring this up towards the red area. Then with the magenta and green, I'm going to bring that down as well slightly just to introduce a bit more red in there. Then I'm going to change from highlights to midtones, and I'll do the same thing just there. Bring some of that red in. And it's just a case of playing around with this till you get the kind of effect that you are going for yourself. So for me, that isn't looking too bad. It would do as a quick demonstration, but of course you can spend a bit more time on that if this is what you are going for. So there is one reason why you may want to use a paintbrush tool with a mask in order to combine images together. Another reason for using the paintbrush tool could be just to use a symmetry option and make yourself some patterns. So once again, if I come back up to the pixel percent on the top left hand side, then go and select my paintbrush tool once again. And then you'll find over here towards the right hand side, we have a couple of different options. We have the symmetry right here, which what this is going to do is it's going to duplicate what we paint on top here and add that underneath. So if I make my brush a little bit bigger now, and at this point you can use any colors you like for your brush. It doesn't matter because we're not using a mask. So you'll find once we start painting on here, it's going to just duplicate that underneath it. And this is what you're going to use for creating patterns. And of course, you've got the same options up here with your hardness and your flow. You can also change brushes in your brush section over on the right hand side and just go through all of these and see what it is that you like to work with. So I choose an ink one right there and start drawing again and see what kind of effect that gives us. So I'm just going to command or control Z just to undo that. And with the symmetry option, we can add some more points rather than just a center one right there. If we come back up to the top and then we add some additional lines, just like that, you can have as many as you like. Then once you start painting in these areas, it's going to duplicate it, like I said before. And this is a really good way of getting some really good patterns. So once again, I'll just quickly undo that with Command or Control Z. So there is another reason why you may want to use a paintbrush tool. 
So because I want to speed the video up at this point, I'm not going to cover too much more on the cemetery option. However, there are going to be plenty of other YouTube videos based on this topic if you want to go and check those out in more detail. But for now, we'll move on to another reason why you may want to use a paintbrush tool, and that is going to be for highlights and shadows, which looks so much more professional when it comes to creating digital art, just like my zombie guy here that I drew. So the first thing that I need to do is be able to get inside of his head so I can start drawing my highlights and shadows. So I'm just going to head over to the right hand side inside of my layers and I want to go ahead and find my zombie's head. So for any of you guys who are new to Affinity Designer in terms of creating digital art, this may look really overwhelming to you with these hundreds of layers that I have inside of here. However, if you guys do want to learn the basics of vector design inside of Affinity Designer, then I do have a full tutorial crash course on Affinity Designer, which I will link in the top right hand corner now. But moving on with the tutorial, what I want to do is just zoom in on my zombie's head, just so you guys can see that a little bit better. So I hit Command or Control plus and minus on my keyboard to zoom in and out. I'll just bring that up so I can frame his head. And this is a beauty of vector art. If I keep zooming in, you can see no matter how close we get, we have these really nice crisp looking lines. And these are always going to stay perfect despite of how big or small you make this design. And that is the reason I prefer vector art over pixel art. So I'm going to zoom back in again just to get his face into the frame. And then we'll start drawing our highlights and shadows with a paintbrush tool. So just like before, we want to go ahead and make our way to the top left hand corner. And we're going to change to our pixel persona. Then we'll go and select our paintbrush tool over on the left hand side. Then we'll make our way back over to the right hand side and we'll change our brush to be something different. So first of all, I'm going to go for a soft brush just down here at the bottom. Then what we need to do is create a brand new pixel layer, which is going to be inside of our head. So I'm just going to come down to this layer just below the head. I'm going to come down towards the bottom where we have this new pixel layer option. So I'll go ahead and add that. That means that we can draw on top of this pixel layer. So with that selected, I'm going to go up to my color and I'm going to choose a color that I want to work with. And because I'm going to work with a highlight, I'm probably going to go more into the white section and we'll just introduce a white highlight around the right hand side of his face. So at the moment, this is just going to go anywhere I place it. If I start painting, it's just going to end up anywhere on the canvas. And that's not what we want to do. We want to use the face as a clipping mask. So if we try and paint outside of the face, it's not going to go outside. But before we move on to that, I just want to address this issue that we've got right here. You can see that we've got this bright halo all the way around this shape. And the reason we've got that is because we have this wet edges turned on up there. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'll hit Command or Control Z just to undo. And then once I start painting again, you can see we don't have that bright halo effect. So I'll just undo that once again. Now we'll talk about how we're going to get our paintbrush to mask inside of the face. And that is simply by coming down to our layers to where I have my head, which is this one right here. What I need to do is then just drag this pixel layer that we created all the way down. And then I want to place it inside our head right there. So we're going to move it over slightly to the right to the indents then just let that go. That now will act as a clipping mask meaning whatever we paint inside of this head can't come outside of it. So I'll start painting now to make that really bright white, as you can see. And I'm going over here, but it's not affecting the rest of the image. And that is known as a clipping mask. So once again, I'll command or control Z to undo that. And I'll make my paintbrush a little bit smaller with my left and right bracket keys to go either bigger or smaller. Then I'll just start painting this in just to get the rough shape that I'm going for, just to create myself a highlight. I'm going to shrink the brush as I go around the ear. And just make your way around the entire image of where you'd want this highlight to go. Just go ahead and make that a little bit bigger if you like. So that is a highlight complete for the right hand side of the face. You do have the same options up here when it comes to your opacity and your flow and your hardness. And your hardness is definitely something you're going to use at this point. You're going to switch between either a soft or a hard brush. The flow once again is something you're going to switch in between that giving you more paint or less paint. That is depending on what you want to go for. Your opacity is something that I don't really use at this point when it comes to creating highlights and shadows. And the reason for that is because I generally do that inside of my layers. So for instance, if I just select the layer right now with a highlight and we come up to the top here where it says opacity, I'll just drop down the opacity on that layer by itself. Just so I can make that a little bit more subtle, just like that. So I bring that around 50% just so we have a bit of a subtle highlight. And then what we're going to do underneath that pixel layer where it has our highlight, we could go ahead and rename that if you want so you know what it is. 
So I call that one highlight. What I'm going to do next is come back down towards the bottom and create another pixel layer. And this one we're going to call shadows. And although you can paint on the same layer, if you want to do your highlights and shadows on the same layer, that's up to you. However, I don't recommend you do that as you're going to want separate controls over both of these layers when it comes to your opacity or maybe using different blending modes. But with our shadows selected, now we'll go up and we'll change our color to black. And then it's a case of coming back over again and now just painting on the other side. So we just go ahead and make our way around the image like we did before, get a little bit smaller around the ear. I'm not going to make this perfect or too creative. It's really just a way of showing you how we would use this. So we just do that just like that. Then once again, we can just drop the opacity on the layer itself. So we'll bring that down to something you're happy with. Just a bit of a subtle shadow, just around 40% will be fine. And when it comes to coloring all of this, you're going to focus on all the areas where you would have highlights and shadows not just necessarily on the right hand side and the left hand side of the face. So I just zoom back out at this point so we can see what we kind of got. And of course that definitely needs more detailed work than that. That doesn't look too good, but it is a quick demonstration. But what I'm going to do is just undo that shadow layer that we just created and I'm going to change the hardness on my brush. So we'll go back up now and we'll give that a hard edge as this is another way of doing your highlights and shadows, which may look better for some of you if you're not too keen on the soft effect. So once again, we'll just start going around the image. And as you can see, this is where we're going to want to change the flow as we have all these individual circles where it has different layers of paint and that doesn't look right. So our command or control Z to undo that. We'll go up, we'll change our flow all the way to 100% and then we'll go ahead and try that again. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller to start painting around this and just do exactly what we did before. To make your way around and the only difference really is it's going to give us a harder edge around it rather than a softer edge so i won't make that perfect i'll just be quick with this drop that opacity once again just to something you're happy with maybe around 15 percent zoom back out so we can see the differences with the hard edge and the soft edge and that really is up to you for what you want to go for there so before i wrap this video up i want to mention another method that we can do when it comes to highlights and shadows and that is using a vector brush, which in my opinion is so much better as you get a lot more creative control. So I'll go ahead and just delete both of these and we'll start doing this again. So I'll delete that shadows and that highlights. Then what we're going to do is come back out of the pixel persona and go back into the designer persona on the top left hand corner. Then we're going to come back over to our layers and we need to create a brand new layer inside of here. So this time around, instead of using a pixel layer, it's just going to be a standard layer. And this is one of the flaws with Affinity Designer, which drives me nuts. Even though down here I was selected on my face to begin with, when I added a new layer, it took it all the way to the top. So what we've got to do is select that and bring that all the way back down once again. And just like before, we just got to indent it inside of the head. So we bring that over slightly to the right till it shrinks and then just drop that in. Then in order to start creating shadows and highlights using the vector brush, we need to make our way over to the left hand side and we've got to select either the pencil tool or the pen tool. These kind of do the same thing just in different ways. The pen tool is going to take you a bit more time getting around the image in terms of getting all your corners and everything perfect for what you are going for. Whereas a pencil tool that's kind of more freehand than what I prefer to use myself. So with that said I'll use a pencil tool. Next we want to go up to the top and make sure that we have a stroke color inside of here. So I've got black ready for that one. Next to that, we have the width in terms of how big we want this stroke to be. So I'll go ahead and make that around 18 points. Then it's just a case of starting to draw inside of our head to get the kind of shape that we are going for. Just get that to go all the way around the ear and back down the other side like we did before. And just do that to however you like. And then we'll bring that all the way down to the bottom. And this is a reason I generally prefer using vector because even though we've made this a width of 18, if that's too thick for us, we can always go back up to the width and we can actually shrink that back down to make it smaller. Or alternatively, we can make it bigger and we can also move that around if we're not happy with it. So I can go ahead and grab the move tool and I can pull that over and just readjust that to wherever I want it to go. As well as that, if we go and select our node tool, we have all these points here, which we can actually come in and start manipulating. So we can just readjust that to make it a little bit more for what we were going for as well as add additional points inside of here by tapping along and you can just move that in or out and do whatever you want to do with that. So I just undo that quickly. So what we're going to do now is back over to our layers and we'll just go ahead and drop that opacity once again. 
and we'll take that down to around 15%. And I'll just deselect that for a moment so we can kind of see what we've got. So that's kind of the same effect that we just did a moment ago with a pixel brush. But the difference is this is non-destructive. We can always come back at any point. Go back to our node tool like we did before and start moving around points if you want to go ahead and adjust that to any way you want it. As well as still have the option to change the width if you want to go back and change that as well. You're not stuck to having what you had originally. Whereas with a pixel design, you're going to have to redraw it every time that you want to change something. So that is another reason why I really like this. And one more thing that we could do with this, if you decide that you want a non-destructive way of having a hard or a soft edge, right now we have the hard edge, but if you decide that you'd rather have this be soft, then just go over to your layers, make sure you selected that highlight or that shadow that you've created, go down to effects, and all you got to do is add a Gaussian or a Gaussian blur, however you like to pronounce that. Go ahead and change that radius, and what that's going to do is soften that edge for you just like that, so it just looks a little bit better as well. If for any reason you didn't like that soft brush effect, then that is perfectly fine. This is non-destructive. All you do is go back into your effects and go ahead and turn that off and you are back to where you started. So once again, that is something that you can't do with a pixel layer. And one last thing before I end the video, we can also go up to our pressure settings in our stroke menu. So if we go down here to where it says pressure and we can just start messing around with this to get it a little bit thinner towards the bottom, as you can see and towards the top just like that, just to give it that little bit more creative control so we make it big at the top and as it gets towards the bottom it starts getting a little bit thinner. Just like I stated there's just so much more creative options when it comes to doing highlights and shadows with a vector brush. So that is it for today's video, I hope you found this video useful, if you did then go ahead and hit that like button as that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and helps other people find my content. And of course, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out all of my other videos on Affinity Designer. I've also created beginner courses on Affinity Photo and Affinity Publisher if you'd like to go ahead and check those out. But for now, I hope you have a great day and I will see you in my next video.